Here I'm starting on the first project, Hands, Fantasy Hands, and so far I have two image planes, fairly well lit images of hands, and minimizing shadows. And this is how you can see I'm positioning it um, with the two thumbs pointed out. And I can flip this other image plane around to get the back. But this is how I'm going to start. I have this mesh so far starting in the front view. This is what I have so far in the flat, just the front view, this kind of shape. And then I'm going to build out the fingers. I don't want to build out the fingers like a glove here quite yet. I'm going to add that a bit later. Um, so just if you could get into this first general position, um, with the image planes and the general construction here with create polygons and I've merged that one in the corner I think to make that you have enough tools to be able to make this shape in a couple of different ways but you should be able to start with that kind of shape and this will represent the back of the hand which the image is here and I'm going to build out this way okay so this is uh, just the first video and I'm going to stop there and continue on to different parts this is part two building uh, the hands out. I always started out leaving this and I want to show you a couple other tips here. You notice this one is a little bit dim and this one is bright. Um, I even gave it a little bit of a color. It's useful that when you're modeling on image planes not to hurt your eyes so much and dim this down. Um, this was this white color as well. So I'm going to go to uh, control A. <coughs> that will open um, the color gain and the offset for this uh, image plane. This one's already been set. I can make it a different color. See it change if I want to. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, um, a beige color like that, maybe. Right now, I just want it to dim down a little bit dusty colored so it doesn't compete, especially when I'm working in that view to see how it pops out a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other image plane. Give it a little bit of a darker, maybe dustier color. Maybe bring down the contrast. Something like that. It's just optional. And also, you probably already know about using the, sh the X-ray shading. When it's off, it's blocking here. If we want to see more details, use the X-ray. And again, starting in the front view, to get this far and then I'm going to add the figure. So we're in the part two here, we're going to start building this out and now we want to work a little bit in the other views. So I have the side view and you can see I'm starting to massage this a little bit over in the corner to conform to a bit of a 3D shape and I can use x-ray here so you can see through it. It's much better. And the sides are not going to agree absolutely perfectly, even if it's your hand that you photographed and turned really nicely. Um, there's going to be some change or give in it. But we're not doing the whole glove, all the fingers, without taking a peek in the side view. But what we can do is just this fingerless glove shape without the thumb too. And they're all quads. And he, uh, as I said before, you can build this in any way you want. Um, I just started with one shape and I extrude the X, drew the X, extrude it here, and then emerged on that one. But you could build it differently. Um, slightly different tools. Okay, now I'm going to start to um, add more. See, I don't want to add a ton of edges and CVs that I have to move around. I just want to get in the basic shape. You can see it's already taking on a bit. Let's see. Hit three to see the curve. It's taking on a bit of a curved dynamic shape. Um, this probably can go in a little bit. Like that. That edge. You can hit the um, down arrow to grab all of the edges and push them in a little bit to give them shape. And that's not going to distort anything here because I'm moving it just now I do not want to work in the perspective view only I should say I minimally work in the perspective view you don't want to if I started to do this whole thing in the perspective view it would really be messed up um, because look at what it's doing here um, I really should be starting in the flat views and then correcting in the perspective view and that will make you 
really efficient and really fast because you won't be cleaning up a lot of mistakes. Okay, you just a little bit, do a little bit and check and check and check. All right, something like that. But really, this might be curving around. It's too early to tell. Um, we haven't really done that much to it. But now we're going to start um, inserting a um, edge loop tool. And um, what you really should be doing is building up your polygon tools here, which I already put them. You hold Shift and Command to take any menu, any if I have Mesh or Edit Mesh, any of this stuff, Extrude, Merge, um, Smooth, Fill Hole, Conform, any of this stuff, if I want them on the shelf here, I hold Shift and Command and it puts it on the shelf. So I already put on the shelf the tool for um, Split Edge Ring. I'm just going to click it and let's go back to one mode and let's go back. Again, I said working in the front view one at a time and let's just do one for each finger here and that's enough and then we're going to go and try to place this as agreeable as we can to where it seems to belong now i'm massaging these over so it has nice even flow to it it shouldn't feel like it's a, a grid that's imposed on the surface it should feel like kind of like a web or a spider-man's mask how it just how the lines just flow over the organic features as it is and now you're going to check the um, side view. So if I grab the edge, um, whoops, I'm going to hit the down arrow, select these because it's faster, hitting shift, and seeing where that feels on the skin, that looks like it could come out a little bit more. I'm just making this curve shape. Maybe I don't need to grab all those edges. And you feel this? This should probably start to go in more. So you're not building a flat glove, really. You're building a three-dimensional organic shape thing and just little nips and tucks along the way you can feel that this one is poking out and then you can three it and you should start to feel that it's not a flat piece it's getting some life in it right on the edge and you're going to start moving oops along these edges I haven't really done the bottom yet right so these should be starting to move around the contour of the wrist. This is trickier than it seems, you know, because it's always shifting in space. A hand is very complex. It's almost like a face. And that's why we're doing it, because we're going to build up to building a head later. So this is just one part of the character that, uh, that would be. It's not like building a glove, you know, taking an oven mitt and just sewing the two flat parts together. You have to sculpt it all the way around. All right, so when you get to this stage, now we're ready to um, extrude more out the edges, and we're not quite ready yet to do the fingers. That's going to come later, and I'm going to end the video right here. Part three. All right, you have this piece of geometry, which doesn't look like much, but it's foundational. Something that looks like that. How many squares? Um, now before I go further, sorry, before I go further, I want to get you in the good habit of um, knowing what your economy is with CVs and faces. So we're um, from here on out and probably leave it on as you always model projects. You can go into display, heads up display, uh, poly count, and that's going to tell you, you know, exactly what the number is. And then it has 29 vertices. If I select the faces, it's telling me um, how many edges, faces, triangles, etc. So it's 19, really. That's that's present here. I ain't bad. All right. So we're just going to leave that up. If you can't read those little numbers, you can zoom into them. We'll just keep uh, a close watch on them. I wouldn't say close. I would just say keep an eye on them. Okay. Uh, now we're looking in the side view. We're trying to massage these over because this is not a flat, it's more, we're molding, we're sculpting a hand that's dimensional and we're meeting this meaty part of the hand that flows over like that and if you can't see you can zoom in a bit and then we did the work let's say 90% in our front view and then correcting as much as we could distinguish in our side view we could hit one to see what's really going on point to point then and only then we can really look in the perspective view, undulating a little bit in space, curving, conforming in space, 3D. Okay, then at this point, I think we could take this 
edge here, and we're not going to extrude the fingers yet. We're going to get a thickness to the whole palm. We're going to get that. We're going to select faces. Just select all the faces like this, and we're going to extrude the faces. And I'm going to um, extrude this way. Now you see it's good black. If it gets black, that means it's reverse. We select the whole. Um, it's annoying, but uh, it is Maya telling you uh, what sides what. Uh, which is a good thing to know and you have to know it, but I'm going to reverse the surface So that's on a mesh display reverse. You can have one face. That's dark. I know I've said this in the weeks before um, You can have the whole thing that you, the best way is to select all the faces and make sure you don't miss any and then um, Mesh reverse to make sure those normals are pointing out anyway, the major point was that you extruded the faces and then you have pretty much this meaty part of the hand and when I hit three you see like if you were making a clay sculpture of a hand this would just be the palm and then um, connecting the wrist and then you would mold out the fingers from there so of course we're not done yet we're taking this edge this edge this edge this edge and probably massaging a little bit that way yep we're using the perspective view a little bit more but uh, as you find as you model the image planes will be of less use and you're just depending on some eyeballing organic skills and that's why you don't want too many points you're just moving some of them uh, look how messy this is getting this is why we want to keep it light too it's going to get really cluttered really soon really quickly um, that's another reason to build in halves when you're using symmetry in this particular one we're not using symmetry um, because there's a different enough change in in uh, topological shape as we're going around it so you know a hand is not really symmetrical as a head is if we draw a line of symmetry between it we're not going to find an even mirror image so um, it's because there's bilateral symmetry to the whole body. So your left and right hand are symmetrical mirrors of each other, but the hand itself is um, not as a, as a mirrored object as your head is. Um, doesn't have that level of bilateral symmetry. You know, that's part of the assignment that's a little bit difficult is we're going to have to build out the whole thing as a unique asymmetrical object somewhat asymmetrical and you can see as I'm talking what I'm doing is smoothing out these edges a little that I know this part will be the palm and this part is going to be this meaty part of the palm coming out here now I have the image plane of the back of the hand and I could flip that around of course I'm not going to flip the image plane around I'm going to take I have another image that is of the palm of the hand you know when I'm ready for it and you have your hand right in front of you so you probably can stick that out and look at your own hand on that side and I want you to think and model intuitively getting these references are only the beginning it's kind of a scientific foundation only and then you have to be the artist excuse me the artist that you know brings it all together okay um, I'm gonna spend a, a while on that but I'm gonna show you where we're going first and I'm going to take one step forward and then maybe back up a little and end the video. So where I'm going is once I get the shape and the palm, I have more to do here, which I'm going to show you. But uh, where I'm going is later, now, when I have all this finished, I'm going to extrude out for the fingers. And one thing that I showed you really to pay attention to is this feature that's called Keep Faces Together. Now, if I just, they're default on. If I pull that out like that, um, that's going to be a problem because those fingers aren't separated. You see, actually, they are one point. And if you look, only one point selected. There are not two there. So let's back up. Undo, undo, undo. Select it. Okay, let's extrude again. This time, where it says keep faces together, let's turn that off just by clicking on it. It turns off. Okay, now when we pull them out, they're separated. So you'll sometimes have to do that and, and no, 
now to master that. But that is where we're going. That's where we're eventually going. I am not going to continue that because we have a long way to go still with this stuff. Okay? And you probably thought, where's the thumb? Aren't you going to do that? Yes, and that is premature probably to get into now before I sculpt the front and the half, uh, front and the back of the hand. But yep, that's direction, and I should be following, of course, my reference. So um, a student asked whether there should be a square here, an extra base. I thought that was really astute to notice, to ask that question. And I'm going to say, well, probably not. If you're building a character and it's for your capstone or something, I don't think you have to do that because how often are we going to see it that close, you know, where we'll see, hey, that's a razor sharp edge. Um, but if you do plan a shot where you see the fingers really close, then you may need a more high detailed mesh, which would require what? Yep, we had to have done this earlier before we move the fingers. We'd have to need a second line in there, and it would get really heavy. And it's before we put that finger in, of course, right? We had to, we had to have done that before we ex we extrude that finger, which uh, certainly not expected for this project. All right, let's do a three test. Just hit three and see where we're going. It looks like a cat's paw at this point just too simplified but that's direction we're going and I'm going to stop there because uh, again we're there's a lot more we have to do to that to smooth it out uh, before we do the last fingers okay that's it for the